Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 250. Is that good enough, Brock? Yeah. For the week of, what is this, March 1st, <laughs> 2016. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who is here with me this week? Brock Sager. And Charlie West. Got the crew here for the anniversary episode. Oh, uh, yeah. What are you going to do? We're almost as old as Spawn. Hey. Uh, the oldest comic book currently being published, is it? That you don't carry. <laughs> Spawn Pass Gold Digger? I feel like we've had this conversation recently. I don't know. I don't know. Is there any pass to that? There has to be, because all the archies are over. Yeah. That was the highest. Yeah, because Savage Dragon hasn't hit that number yet. No, no, no. Huh. I don't know. I'll have to look. I wonder what the highest right now is. It's either Gold Digger or Spawn. Those are my bets. Two books that people really absolutely don't give two shits about. Two books we don't order for the, st- for the show. Yeah. Uh, hey, what's going, what, what, what's going on, guys? What's going on? Uh, I apparently got married on Sunday. You did. Congratulations, you. Brock. We're a group of now old married men sitting here at this table. Yep. Let's talk That's about true. Let's I talk about the group. Let's talk about the good old days. So you just have to join the having kids group, and then we're, we're complete. Not going to happen. I have two kids. They're little dogs. They're really great. We he refuses to take them to Disneyland. Yeah. No, they have at Disneyland. They have a um, like a kennel. You could put the dogs in. That's, that's not. But that's have not you ever Disneyland. taken them? No, because it's I feel weird about leaving them there. They're they're better off on, by themselves because they don't like being. See? I think I think the kennels with people outside would freak them out more than just being in a hotel room by themselves. I think they like that better. I think they do. They just seem to sleep. So, Brox, everything went yes. well. Yes, I was did. there. That was fun. There. It was nice. We actually got a really good picture of you and I. That Leanne took with the Polaroid camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old school. really good. Everyone commented on it when they looked at the board. They were like, that's oh, a that? really good picture nice. of Brock and Ryan. Yeah, Polaroid pictures take pictures you just can't take on Instagram. Not quite But you the same. take it with your phone and then post it to Instagram. So. Well, I took a blurry picture of the blurry photogra- photograph. I'm going yeah, yeah. to get it. I'm going to scan a copy of it so we nice. have it. Nice. Everything was well. Yeah. Cal is good. Mm-hmm. You're good. Post-wedding cleanup and dealing with it's all the crap. far from done. <laughs> Takes a while. I know. Apparently, you have a bunch of extra um, extra dessert that I'm, I was told to ask about. Uh, I did look, and uh, apparently there was only two pieces of cheesecake, which Damn. I think have been I think I think have been consumed, and uh, I don't remember what the other one was. That That's was. okay. We got a big thing of mashed potatoes back. We got a big <laughs> thing of uh, of um, pasta back. So yeah, we're we're all right. I got some uh, vegan carrot cake. Nice. Yeah, it was all right. I tried it. It was it was okay. Yeah, whatever. It was bomb. Vegan stuff always tastes a little off. So it's okay. That's you just you just like our, my cake topper. Uh your Batman, Mister and Mrs. Yeah, yeah, your Mister and Mrs. Batman cake topper. That was nice. That was cool. You guys, uh, I know you're going to uh, Disneyland yes. in uh, what week and a half? Like eight days. Okay, it's kind of a kind of a honeymoon. Kinda. It was originally her birthday present for this past year. Uh, just the two of us going without kids. Thank yeah. God. But rolled it into sort of a. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna attach the wedding stuff. To no, it, yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll go to the fine. Disney courthouse and uh, and you know eat din- like Main Street. We'll eat dinner like oh look we have a reservation like we're special. Uh, well, if you don't have a dinner, if you don't have a reservation at Disneyland, you're just not eating. That's the, that's the problem. Most no, times, when we so. went when we went during the funny thing when we went during Christmas. We actually walked in the Carthy Circle and got a table within a reasonable amount of time in the middle of the day. Uh, downstairs or upstairs? Up. Well, if it's during the day, they, may, they probably have seating available. Yeah, at night. Forget about it. And being vegan, man, you feel like you're getting something made off of one of those cooking shows. It's awesome. I had, um, I don't know if it's, it's probably not vegan, but I had the, um, there was some pasta I had there that was so good. Uh, if you like Disneyland, you definitely want to make sure you listen next week. We're going to have a very special episode next week. Not a, not a, it's about comic books, but it's also... It's a first so, for us. Some of it's not about comic books. So we're going to have a special guest on next week, so make sure you check out one. And, um, um, I wanted to make a comment, though, to you. Um, we're done with the wedding stuff and the Disneyland stuff, but sure. I want to make a comment to you. You broke your own rules for when it came Bat- to, ba- to Batman Dawn of Justice. Batman v Superman. No, no, Dawn no, no, of no, 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 no. Cut the cut the garbage out. Let's let's get to the the heart of the problem. Superman, Don Justice. No, so, whatever. My rule normally <laughs> is is a teaser, a trailer, and that's it. It's so hard to stay away from Batman v Superman stuff. I've been pretty good because there's been some TV spots. There was like some 
I want to say there was like some minute long scene. Probably. Uh, with uh, to be Kimmel, I want to say this past week. So I've avoided yeah. a lot of that stuff. Kimmel but, does a lot of that. But I have seen a couple trailers. With Star Wars, I shut down. I was just like, no, fast forward, fast forward. Don't look, don't look. Um, that well, Superman- funny enough, if the Star Wars didn't really add too much when you got to the TV trailers. Like, it didn't really have too much more. Uh, here's the thing. With Batman v So with, with Star Wars, I feel like in is all this brand new stuff, yeah. right? With Batman v Superman, I'm not going to say it's not new, because obviously it's something I haven't seen before, but I, I know all the players, right? I know everything. What what most people believe to be the big spoiler, the Doomsday thing, has kind of already been out there. That was in the first like major, like real trailer. Um, seeing Batman fight Superman for another half a second, eh, you know, I, I, I kind of already know what to expect with that. Like, I haven't really shied away from Civil War stuff. They haven't really shown a ton new. No. I feel like with Batman v Superman, they are intentionally hiding, maybe a little bit like what ended up happening with the Star Wars trailers, they're hiding what I believe to be some of the more major elements of it. So mm-hmm. we're not seeing the camp, the Justice League cameos that are supposed to be in it. We're not seeing too much Lex. No. They have – in that big trailer, you kind of get his plan. But there's obviously more to it than that. Mm-hmm. And they're so far doing a very good job of focusing on the Batman v Superman part, which I understand is the middle. Mm-hmm. And the end clearly is all of them teaming up. They haven't really focused – too heavily on that yeah. um and that if i start seeing like real legit new clips then no 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 i don't want to see that but you know seeing an extended half a second of superman ripping the lid off the batmobile i've seen that a thousand times i kind of know what i'm getting into that's okay i'm just convinced i'm gonna have to melt my cell phone for the week <laughs> between the 21st and the 24th what? so that's what i was going to talk about charlie you Along with our good friend Toby, who hopefully will be back on at least for our Batman v Superman talk. Myself, uh, our good friend Lane. Wait, did Lane go? No, I don't think Lane got it. I don't know. Our friend Raphael, our friend Al, a few of us. We all went, if you remember, um, nine months ago to see the Batman v Superman IMAX premiere trailer. It's like you guys had sex and you're about to get your baby. at, At AMC. And they promised us that we'd get to see the movie. And only the people that went to see the trailer a week early. Waiting and waiting and waiting. What happened Monday night? I get a call from Charlie. Have you checked your email? Have you checked your email? So I got it. Your wife got it. You and Toby, you got yours though, right? I. Toby has his. I've got mine, but I can't go. So So you officially can't go? I can't. Uh, I literally had to turn down two separate showings of Batman v Superman in the same day. Uh, the universe hates me. The, the the show on Monday and then our show, right? Because yeah. you're gone that entire week. I, I just love the fact that like when the first one came out, I'm like, I'm on a fucking plane then. Yeah. And then the second one comes around, I'm on a fucking plane then. <laughs> so here's what's happening. Tickets for Batman v Superman went up Thursday, May, 20, May 24th, I believe. May March. Uh, March 24th, yeah. Thursday, March 24th. Uh, first showing at 6 p.m. local time. First, That's when the first show is. Tickets went on sale Monday morning. Uh, at this point, we still didn't know anything about the early tickets. So uh, 6 o'clock for too many people that I know is just too early. 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock, we can usually deal with yeah. that. 6 o'clock is too early. I can't close the store at 5.30. Um, so I opted for the 9.30 show uh, on Thursday. And so we're going to be in that second group of people seeing it, especially being West Coast and the last people on Thursday. But then yesterday, last uh, Monday night, that night after I bought the tickets, we get the email. Monday, the 21st, 10 p.m., again, local time, uh, we are going to be seeing Batman v Superman here in in, uh, in Santa Clara. So uh, it's not, not quite a week. It's three days prior. I, I, I got to uh, deal with you for three days before I get to see, have make an educated. Well, we are going to be good, especially because Charlie won't be able to see it. Uh, whatever we do for the podcast that week, will we will I will bite my tongue and not talk about Batman v Superman. However, we can talk about Hope Man. We will we will talk about it on the following episode. Maybe I can. When are you coming back? Are you going to see it Friday morning? Yeah, I'm gonna go see it Friday morning. Maybe we can do like a, 
maybe we can do like a Friday night podcast, like at my house or something, something special. Maybe, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do something special. But Bryce is going to be with us on Thursday, so I'm excited for that. I, I want Bryce on one side and Brock on the other side just so I can strangle them both at the same time whenever they make their fucking smart-ass dipshit comments. Hey, the moron. Only, but but we, we have to make sure that there's like some kind of recording device of just the audio. Yeah, yeah. And I want Charlie and Toby on the other side so if they try to get away from me, they'll run into you guys and Toby can kick you with his broken leg or whatever the hell. So anyway, anyway, anyway. He can trip us on the way out. From what I understand... Now, I'm assuming it's in 3D. It says IMAX. It actually doesn't say 3D anywhere on the ticket, and I read. And now, Batman with, with Man of Steel, I missed the fine print. And this, I read. No fine, all fine print, nothing says 3D. I'm assuming it's going to be 3D, but I don't know. But that said, it says only for people that signed up. So it's not like they're going to give advance passes to other people. There will be press there, which is fine. So correct me if I'm wrong just because i was thinking about it it's at a different theater than where we saw the trailer right no no same, same theater mercado yeah we no, saw the trailer at mercado mm-hmm. yeah here's yep, where yep, yep. uh and it says only one ticket per person normally these things are like two or three tickets you know two or three people per ticket ids will be checked must match the name that they gave to me, this feels – and the theater was half full when we went there, right? If that, right? So to me, it's going to be press, us, and, and hopefully half empty. I don't – maybe I, – I hope this is what happens well, they'll because – Well, they'll probably fill the rest of the seats with like contest winners and stuff. I, I was just going to say, I my gut tells me you're probably not going to see press at a 10 p.m. showing. I, I mean, that's what it said. Well, no, but what I'm saying is I would not be surprised if they have a separate showing – I've been earlier, to, possibly in the same theater, even could be for press like and general show. release, and then do a additional the fans, the fan yeah. screening. So yeah, I'll probably do contest winners and stuff for that one. Well, like the radios. Well, like I said, it said only the. This is what it says on the ticket: only the people that saw the trailer are getting to see this. So maybe there will be like forty people in the theater when we see Batman v Superman. That'd be fucking awesome because. I would love that. I don't have to deal with a bunch of – so you – I mean you were there. The kids were there. Nadia was there. None of you were going or are they going to go? As far as I know, none of them are going to a 10 p.m. showing. Like if it was earlier – four less people in my theater getting in my way. Charlie's tall. He'd sit right in front of me like a jerk and block everything. So (laughs) yes. Oh, God. I'm so excited. I hope the movie starts out like the movie started out for Green Lantern. Oh, so – Awesome, you mean? 20 no. days? 20 days. No, where they didn't get the previews right and it was oh, all fucked oh, up. Oh, when we saw it yeah. and they kept messing up. Yeah, 20 days. 20 days. We've waited so long. When did Iron Man come out? 2008? I remember thinking, man, that DC needs to do this. And here we are. Yeah. Eight <laughs> years later. Yes. I remember coming out of Iron Man totally expecting DC was going to like scoop them on this. They were just going to look at what they did at the end of Iron Man with the little teaser. With And I at the time, I was like, so DC's already got the studio, could just streamline this and beat them to the punch. And now we're finally getting there. <laughs> now, as many people on the show know, and I'm sure Bryce is listening, being like, you're talking DC apolog- apologist. And I, I believe Toby falls into this camp a little bit too. Charlie, uh, you seem to love everything, so I don't know about you. <laughs> um, I'm not going into Batman v Superman thinking it's going to be the best movie or whatever. Uh, you know, even if it's the worst piece of shit, it's going to be the best. People like myself and Toby, I feel, we're very judgmental on this stuff. I, I, I like a lot of the comic book movies because I feel like they do, for the most part, a good job. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty open with interpretation. I'm pretty open with how they do this. But if the movie's real bad... I, you know, I, I feel like I acknowledge that more than most people. Green Lantern is a case where I never said Green Lantern was an A-plus movie. I've never said that. No, we know. I don't believe Green Lantern is an F like a lot of people say it is. I believe people have this weird binary best or worst, and they put Green Lantern in worse, and that isn't fair. A lot of these movies are good. A lot of these, Some of these movies are average. Green Lantern, to me, falls in that sort of a- average, high average where I believe it legitimately should fall. Okay, I, 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 I honestly like it better than most people because of the source material. However, I understand the flaws in this movie. Okay, so which is better, Green Lantern or Deadpool? The original Deadpool? 
Oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. I, I thought you said Daredevil. Um, what? I, I thought you were talking like the TV show. I, I, I heard Daredevil in my head, and I was like, the movie? But you said Deadpool. I know. I yeah. heard Daredevil in my head, which is better, Green Lantern or Deadpool? Um, I mean, I think Deadpool is more successful in the end. I personally— Fucking dodge the motherfucker. No, of course. Bryce is sitting there screaming his ass off going— I believe Deadpool is a better movie. I believe I go. like Green Lantern more than the average person. I probably— I'm not the target audience. You care for about the Green Lantern, Lantern character more than you care about Deadpool, but Deadpool is a better film. I think Deadpool is more successful in what it tries to do. Uh, yeah, yes, the fucking no, but I, that's that's I, I believe. Yeah, I believe Green Lantern had it made some changes would have been a better movie. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, Deadpool does a lot of stuff really well, but I have a base dislike of the character, yeah. so that's tough for me to get around. Green Lantern, I have a big love of the character. I find they did a lot of stuff right in the movie, but they did some stuff wrong. Yeah. So. Uh, I will. I am going to go into Batman v Superman as as open as I possibly can because there's potential for some real crap. Uh-huh. Uh You know, we've we've seen that with Man of Steel. Yes. And again, Sorry. you can you and Bryce and all the fucking trolls on the internet can keep doing Hashtag this. Team Bryce. But you're 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 wrong. Is the problem here? And this is. I, I actually had to full up just stop following Tom Brevoort and and um and and um um what's his face Dan Slott on Twitter because these guys are the worst fucking trolls in the world. Um, about Man of Steel, and it makes me so frustrated because they take a very small, a couple small elements of a movie. And they turn it into the entire movie. They they are blinded to any other possibility. They don't agree with one thing, therefore the entire movie shit. I will I can fully cop to the fact that I really enjoyed Iron Man up to a certain point where I felt it at that point with the Mandarin switch and then the switch at the very end with the so Mandarin. Iron Man three. Right, Iron Man three. Okay. Dude, you said Iron Man only, and I was like, No, no, no. How no, did you not no, like that the, whole movie? No, no, I'm with Iron Man three. I can take a movie and say, I like this part, I don't like mm-hmm. this part. Overall, I don't like the movie, but I like this stuff. Y- you people are incapable of doing that, and you troll and harp on one specific <laughs> moment, and you make the entire movie into that moment. And it's it's not only not fair, it's also not accurate. And that is continuously to this day my problem with people that harp on Man of Steel. Because, look, if you don't like the movie start to finish, that's fine. But people only ever call out, like, two scenes. And they don't ever call out anything else because there's nothing else in that movie that's bad. It's only these two scenes that people disagree with. So it gets really frustrating. So I'm... Well, I mean, for me, it's... I mean, I, it's not two scenes for me that, that that movie kind of let me down in. It's... I couldn't get behind Lois Lane as, as the, the actress as Lois Lane. Okay. Like, she's a great actress. I love her in other stuff, but I could not get behind her as, as Lois in this film. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is... I really wanted – I mean, I was excited for Kevin Costner as Jonathan Kent. I thought it was a great casting um, when we saw the original trailers for mm-hmm. Man of Steel. Like, he just – his voice and his, how he was talking and all this stuff really made it – like, that character shine through. Mm-hmm. And we didn't get very much of that in the film, how it was put together. Okay. So, right? one of the two things people complain about. Um, and then, you know – Overall, it just seemed to me just like how they set up the film, the pacing of the film, where they s- switched stuff around. It just – it didn't line up. Like it was – there was something – Now you're talking in, in generals. Okay. Well, that's the thing is is is, is you're talking specifically about Jonathan Kent, di- the, the, the scene where he dies, and you're talking about when Superman snaps Zod's neck. Yep. Those are two scenes in the film. Yes, those are key scenes for some people because those are key scenes for the character. I, I, I and totally devel- agree. And development of Superman as a whole. But the thing is, is for me, it didn't line up right. It, it felt like there was just something off, right? And for me, that's why the whole film didn't work very well. I want, like, I, the Jonathan Kent stuff, I was excited to see, but I didn't. I didn't get the same feeling I got from the trailer versus what... And it's the same dialogue. So, when it comes to the movie for me, I I am perfectly capable of saying I would have done something different, but also is entirely an else world. No, I know. Meaning, I'm not going to harp on any choice they make to change because it's an else world. It's, it's not like, a direct retelling of... 
the comic book mm-hmm. or the source material at this point. They always try to modernize it. The, the only time I really, really have a problem, and Man of Steel does suffer from this a little bit, is when the filmmaker tries to make the character fit their style more than adapting their style to, to the, the character. character. I don't feel that was the case in, in, in Man of Steel. Uh, People will complain about Zack Snyder. Slow motion effects happen to other characters. People except Zack Snyder. The level no, of va- uh, violence in that movie, if if you want to say there's extreme violence in that movie, is in every other movie that's ever been filmed. So, you know. Well, okay. So this is the thing for me. Like going back to like you know picking apart a movie and, and not liking stuff and being influenced. I loved the stuff on Krypton. Like the opening for yeah. that movie, I was like, "This and is I, awesome and it's I, amazing." And thank you. And I feel like most people are like, "Oh, movie sucks start to finish because of these two scenes," and that is my problem. People will 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 completely write off a movie around two scenes. Now, like I said, I can get, I I understand disliking the movie. I hate Iron Man three because of a couple of elements, but I can also say I really liked or or liked a number of sequences, mm-hmm. and that's my problem with people that hate on Man of Steel. Because if you think that movie is bad start to finish, you are. You are wrong. You are, your opinion is wrong because there is the level of tech, the technical level of filmmaking and the work that goes into these movies means there will be elements that you cannot say that's bad. Mm-hmm. It's because because it is not. I'm not saying you have to like the movie as a whole, mm-hmm. but being but walking out saying the movie sucks start to finish that is not the case. And so when people say oh, there's nothing to like about these movies, that's pure bullshit. No, that's like, that's my problem. Like for me, it's like the, there's nothing wrong with the costume, Superman's costume. I love Zod. I don't character. even love his costume. Yeah, and, I, like like I like, I prefer the red trunks and I prefer a more traditional costume, but it doesn't bother me. You know, but that's the thing is, is like the I think what it is is it's hard watching a film of this caliber. Like Charlie said, I think Zack Snyder kind of bent the character a little too much towards his style versus. You know, alleviating a little bit more because the thing is, is like look, watching you know Batman v Superman trailers and stuff like that. Like Zack Snyder's Batman, I'm stoked. Like I'm super, super stoked because Batman more fits Zack Snyder Snyder style more so than Superman. I I agree. I agree. so you know so that's I think one of the things is like. You know, and yeah, I troll you all the time, like Batman, Donna Justice, and leave out the the V Superman part. You today, earlier this is, today, this is the best. Brock and me were at the liquor store at the front of the complex, and there is he were grabbing some snacks, and, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna throw my stuff in, and I'll, I'll give you some cash later, and because he was paying on his card, and I grab the Doritos with Superman on it. Superman and Batman are on Doritos. And I grabbed the Superman one. And he goes, no, put that back. You have to get a Batman one. I'm not going to buy you a Superman <laughs> Doritos. Like that, I mean, I know. And your dumbass was like, oh, there's none over there. And I like grabbed the bag. I look over. There's like all three <laughs> of the front row is Batman. I'm like, here you go, dude. I, I'm okay with the level of trolling. But when you come down to the the, the actual you know, discussion of the film – I have I have some real hard times with, people, with a lot of people. Anyway, so I Batman, guess, I guess the only <laughs> the only sort of feedback I have is I, I just kind of come from a mindset of you have to avoid the trolls, but you have to be open to feedback. Mm. And I'm hoping they made a technically better movie by listening to the well, feedback yeah, they got mean- on the first. To Man of Steel's a, the second. Man of Steel's a great movie to learn from. You know, yeah. it, it's it, and I mean, this is the this is the, the the look and the style that that Warner Brothers seems to want to go with. And question for you, oh shit, okay, question. Now, who's the troll? You question got that troll for you. Face hold on, on, hold on, hold on. Fucking Comic books face. love retcons, right? Love retcons. Oh Jesus! What if Jonathan Kent didn't actually die? What if they come back and they're like, oh, he got like sucked away in his own magic portal or bullshit. And when he killed Zod, much like Doomsday, didn't actually kill him. He's still alive. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I mean, I mean, clearly we see him in the body bag and all that. But what if he's like in the Kryptonian? Uh, the, 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 the sleep, yeah. yeah. And he's recovering and stuff like that. What, 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 what if, what what if, if they do still then? What if, they, what if they do that? Would that work? Would that, would that alleviate some of your problems? Because you know it's total bullshit because no, you know he dies and they kill him. Yeah. That said, 
if they retcon it. If, because because there's a retcon in, the, in Iron Man three and like the little after the little what directed DVD bit where they're like, oh wait, no, that wasn't the Mandarin. Now there's the real Mandarin. Like that to me is like. I accept that it doesn't make the movie better, but I accept that because they. Well, I that realized, wasn't in Iron Man three. That was on. Well, well what, whatever was that it was bonus on, feature. Bonus yeah. feature on whatever it was. It was on. Iron Man three. It was on. Was it on Thor? But what I'm saying is they acknowledge well, they fucked up, mm. and they're going to fix that to go forward. And I'm totally okay with that. It doesn't make the movie better for me, but I, I, they acknowledge that they fucked up. Now I, mean, I don't think they fucked up with those two scenes in Man of Steel, but for people that did, would that solve anything for you? The one was odd. I'm again, it's. The Zod scene for me, and we've talked this to death, so I don't want to talk about it anymore. It, it's, it, I mean, it comes down to, did it work for you? Yes or no? Did, did, did I believe he should have killed Zod? Yes. Did I like the way it was done? It wasn't, for me, it wasn't the best way it could have been done. But that said, if Zod comes back, okay, cool. Right? I have no problem with that. Because he's totally doomsday. I mean, one hundred percent. It could be. Yeah. There's no. There's no. It's he's he's Bizarro slash Doomsday. Yeah, there's, there's no question. I mean, he looks more like Bizarro than he does Doomsday. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, but uh, like the thing with Jonathan Kent, I for me, oh, he was sucked off into some portal. I'm like, y- y- you can't. That scene was so horribly done for me, especially with such a strong character like Jonathan Kent, because you know it. In every Spider-Man movie, Uncle Ben still gets shot. Right, like he still dies, like his impact on Peter Parker is still tragic. Whereas, you know, you kind of have this Jonathan Kent that's supposed to be that level of a character. I mean, to Clark, and it, to me, it was just weak the way they did it. Right, it was just weak. It, it really bad. If they brought him back, I'd be like. Okay, still can't forgive you for the shitty way you took him out, but... The Legion of Superheroes go back in time, time. and they <laughs> okay. grab if, him as if the... They, if they bring the Legion in and he snaps through time, fine, I'll <laughs> forgive it. Because it brought the Legion in. But if it was some stupid, like, Phantom Portal, Phantom Zone Portal bullshit, they're like, no, nah, it's still done. It, like, it's Bermuda. It's the Bermuda Triangle in the middle of fucking Kansas. Well, Charlie... I won't text you crazy stuff on Monday. I will text you a simple thumbs up or pile of poo. How about that? Okay. And I'll just probably text you back swear words. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go see Man of Steel in 20 days. So I'm excited. Very excited. I'm excited for Batman. So uh, we have a lot of people that donate to us on Patreon. Yes, we actually got a number of new uh, donations this month. So normally I read it off at the end of the episode, but I felt like, hey, we should really actually read this during kind of the middle part of the episode. Yeah, to so, make sure people here, th- th- these good people that help us I out. know, I know. I want to make sure these people get their promotions so and stuff. So we can so. bore you in the middle of the episode. So we're going to have our it's kind of... boring. It's awesome. just kidding. We're going to kind of promote some of these guys in the middle here, and then at the end we're going to do, because it's the end of the month, or it's the first of the month, so we're going to do a little it's roll call of, of, of all our good backers. So, if, you know, if, if, you, if you don't need to hear the big list, you can you can tune out there at the end, but uh, uh, we uh, again we have a number of different things that are going on this month. Again, we're gonna have a couple guests and uh, uh, some, some and then we're Batman v Superman. So this is gonna be a crazy month for us here. Uh, but I definitely want to thank a number of our guys here from Patreon. Uh, let me go back up to my list. There it is. Let's start with um, our our regulars that have done, been with us for a long time. We have Albert Soy, mm-hmm. his app Plant Everywhere on iTunes. Make sure you go check that out. I should actually say if you never. Listen at the end of the podcast. You don't know what this is talking about. We have a Patreon. It's a, you can donate to the podcast. A little bit of money every month is as little as a dollar a month. Helps support the podcast. Pay for our hosting. Give us some pizza beforehand. Pays for repairs. So we had to get a new board, uh, our new new cables and everything, and the geek box. So you know, keep cost money to do this stuff. Don't have to. Mm-hmm. Don't have to ever give us a penny. But if you like this podcast and you want to give us a little bit, uh, we have some Hence, cool stuff. Patreon. Especially if you have something you'd like to promote, we do have a very cheap option, which will help uh, you promote your stuff during uh, every episode. So, uh, Albert and his app, make sure you go check that out. Uh, Jody Lawson has an anthology of comics called Canon, the Triad Comics Anthology at triadcomicstudio.com. Uh, John Nesmith, he's got a podcast called Drinking with Batman. I still need to uh, check that out. Where he goes through every single issue of Batman comics in chronological order. And has a drink while he talks about him. So that's drinking with Batman. A drink? 
or m- maybe multiple. Drinking with Batman. Peter Blanco is uh, produces and helps work on a, a nerded up a uh, YouTube video. So make uh, 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 I think it's weekly uh, YouTube series. So make sure you check that out. YouTube.com slash nerded up TV. We have a couple of new people here that are backing us. Our good friend Julian Titus mm-hmm. is back. He's got his podcast, Nerds of the Little Pants. Make sure you check that out at pixelbit.com. And uh, we're actually going to have Julian on in a couple weeks. Ooh. So we're going to have a nice episode with him. That should be really fun. We've, he's got a good topic, to, uh, a topic that at least for a few of us, it's a very special home. So we're going to have a lot of discussion. He's going to make sure to do it without pants, right? A lot of good discussion, of course. Okay. Uh, we have our friend. We, we uh, can keep our pants on, right? What's that? We can keep our pants on. We we can, yeah. Okay, yeah. just checking. Uh, we got our good friend Manoa Place. It's we also Charlie's have another good friend, Joshua Redding. They have nothing necessarily to promote. Um, if that does change, of course, let us know. We're happy to read your stuff. Joshua on the podcast. would probably like pimp his his uh, his across gen comics. I, that's, what, that's what he'd be pimping. Yeah, he got he's real big in across gen. Um, we do have one other person. I want to read his full email here, only because of um something specific that he mentions mentions in this. This is from Mario, uh, Mario Miranda. Uh, so he, he is one of our backers, and he says um, uh, what he's promoting, but I'll, I'll, I want to read the intro to this. Now, if you guys remember, we had a, um, a longtime listener of the Geekbox, Comedy Button, uh, um, friend of the Geekbox's um, uh, number of the other podcasts, um, Kind of Funny Games. They All these guys uh, probably recognize this game. I uh, probably recognize this guy's name if you're in any of these groups. Uh, his name is Alex Oldhauser. Uh, he actually he was a young guy, passed away uh, a couple months back. Uh, he was actually involved in this um, series of podcasts that uh, Mario was working on here. So he says, uh, first I want to say thanks for bringing up the GoFundMe campaign for Alex Hold- Oldhauser's mother. Uh, this was a couple months back. They had uh, – their house was having some – they were having problem with like mm-hmm. uh, flooding and then he, he – then he passed away right, yeah. during the middle of all this. So absolutely terrible. Uh, they raised a ton of money for their family too. Through, so at, through comedy button and uh, through comedy button and, 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 and yeah, Geekbox. and Geekbox and um, yeah, and all the other all the other places that were part of the kind of funny stuff. So uh, I says it was amazing how many people reached out to help. Um, comedy button, kind of funny, Geekbox, right. etc. It really helped out his mom. So thank you so much from all of Alex's family and friends. I started up a podcast network a couple of years ago with a couple of friends, and Alex was actually part of our network. I got into podcasting with him regularly for over a year. It would be great if you could mention our network. It's the Mind Fuzz Podcast Network. The website is Mind Fuzz, M I N D. I'm oh, sorry, not Mind, Mild Fuzz. I just can't read here. Mild <laughs> Jeez, Fuzz Podcast. Because I'm like, oh, that's M I L D, Mild Fuzz.org. We have podcasts covering TVs, movies, comic books, video games, anime, and more. We also have YouTube content and a few channels. Unfortunately, no, not a nice URL for that. But if you go Mild Fuzz TV, you can There's find there. There's a link somewhere in there. Yeah, you can find yeah. – uh, if you just search for Mild Fuzz TV on YouTube, you can find all that. So uh, thank you very, very much, Mario. Um, you know, uh, I didn't know Alex personally. Yeah. I mean, I interacted with him Maybe once or twice on the Comedy Button forums or online. I mean, I, I was definitely aware of him, and he, he was. He, I know he donated uh, to the Geekbox and everything. So, yeah, uh, we're we're happy to promote your guys' podcast and everything here, and um, I'm glad that all that went well. So, so that's that. We're gonna answer some questions now. Sweet. You guys want to answer some questions? Sure. I got a bunch of questions. One of them here from our good friend Travis Pratt down at Current Comics down in Salinas. He asks. Do any of you guys have CGC books at home in your personal collection? What are your feelings of keeping treasured slash key issues in good condition in bags and boards against you know pro or con or having them CGC'd uh, or have them CGC'd if you sell them and no uh, – basically is asking, do you prefer to slab them or keep them raw? Before we continue to answer this, I want to say there needs to be a disclaimer – at the like text of this saying that Ryan is very dyslexic. It's not dyslexic. It's it's a lot of shorthand. So I'm trying to put this in a in a in a in an easier way to read. It, you, it's your shorthand code is sucks. It's it's, it's Twitter. Is not that much you could say. Would you rather keep your books? Do you like see seeing your books? And if you're going to sell them, do you prefer to sell them raw or graded? That's that's sort of the question. That's the, that's the question. Charlie, you're not a. You're not a graded guy. You're not a CG guy, CGC guy. You're not a keep anything in I, good shape guy. Well, I hold on to <laughs> specific stuff that I really, really like that I don't feel like I could reproduce in a trade or whatnot. Sort of like 
um, some of the old Alex Ross hologram covers they did like those, I will absolutely hold on to and such, but there's no purpose really to getting those CG seed or anything. You don't want a um, cable first appearance CG seed? No. Oh, you just lost the war. No, I don't want to CG seed. I want to be able to open it and appreciate it. <laughs> That's why you get a reader copy. <laughs> but, but I have omnibuses for that. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't think, I don't own any CGC books. The only one I'd want to own is Batman and the Outsiders. But I think the last time I saw it, it was like 40 bucks, and then I didn't buy it. And then Katana's in it. And then she was on the TV show. And now it's like $150. Yeah. I don't know. I guess my thing when it comes to sort of CGC and that kind of stuff is there was like that moment in time when I considered like, ooh, maybe comics could be an investment. And then I realized I am not capable of running comics as an investment, uh-huh. so I refuse to. You know, with CGC, I, I get stuff graded occasionally for the store. Um, not so much these days because if you have like real strong like Silver Age keys or, or, or stuff from the 70s, some of that stuff can be worth a lot. We just don't get a lot of that here, so I don't do it very often. With modern stuff, you can make money, but the time and investment to get it back and to sell it, once you kind of get that ball rolling, it could be worth it. But to get that ball rolling, you're going to have to send in a 1000 bucks a week uh-huh. to really get that moving. You're going to have to send in 50 bucks a week, and you're not going to get your first batch back for three to four months, so you're out. Ten to twelve thousand dollars. I mean, to really make yeah. some money, um, sending a few out here and there after shipping, after eBay fees, after PayPal fees, after CGC fees, you're not making much money. I think this is why they're so inflated in price. Well, that I mean, that's part of it. Yeah, but you're you. If you, it's the book's five bucks. The comic to get graded is twenty five bucks. The shipping back's another ten. So you're already out. You know, forty bucks eBay fees, PayPal fees is going to make that 50. Oh, what are you going to, you know, some stuff, sure, you could sell for a couple hundred, but you're most of these kind of 9 8 current variant. You know, yeah, maybe, I was maybe, say, you're, maybe you're making 10 bucks. It's a lot of work for 10 if bucks. You, if you get back at 10, there's going to be a very different market than if you get back at 9 8 versus a 9. Like, it's like everything else. If you get a really good graded key issue, there's a purpose to get that graded. If you get a really good graded, really old issue, as you said, like Silver Age, it almost doesn't matter what the Silver Age book is. You you can probably make good money if it's graded high enough. Yeah, if you if you yeah. have an Amazing Spider-Man uh, one or Amazing Fantasy fifteen or Next Men one or Daredevil one or, or you know any yeah. of those, yeah, grade them if you're going to sell yeah. them because you'll make more money that way, hands down. And at least on those, the the quality does not matter as much as it does with newer books you, you mean i shouldn't i shouldn't cdc my venom space knights uh no <laughs> <laughs> although so, you should cgc that venom deadpool what if uh oh well i get i'm, I'm still flattening it <laughs> so um oops hold on yeah so cgc sorry i mean i'd say if if there's stuff that you really like care about you know, like it's something that you really like care about, then yeah, go ahead and get it CGC'd. Yep. But yep. Uh, I, here's the thing for me when it comes to that if it's something you're getting CGC'd because you really care about it, I don't see the point of getting it CGC'd. There's other ways to seal it and protect it if that's what you're trying to do. CGC is really all about getting that grade back so it has an intrinsic value based yeah. on that grade yeah. that came back. Right, right, right. Like, I, I, I'm for myself. I would never do it. I, I like just for something I want to keep yeah. for myself. No, no. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't get that stuff graded at all. Yeah. So we have a couple questions here uh, about. I'm trying to pull this up here. I should just get off my ass and go grab it. It's probably a little bit easier. Um, what do you need? Go grab that movie because I forget the name of it. Um, you got a couple questions here about the Legion of Superheroes. I figure this is a great way to do this all at once. First of all, if you haven't seen Supergirl this week, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say 
You know the guys at the Supergirl show are listening to this podcast because I have a feeling we now know exactly what uh, season two of Supergirl is going to be about. Hey, and and if, and if, if, and if, thank if, you because I said it like after the first episode. If they if they are listening, then try and drop us in the show somehow. I uh, I will totally play um, Matter Reader Lad in in a in a uh, in a cameo on Supergirl if you need someone. I will I will 100% play Matter Reader Lad. I can try and do Timberwolf, but I'll have to work out a little bit. That's a real character. That won't work. So we have eat, uh, ma- eat Matter Matter Reader Lad. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's a real character. Yeah, he's a real character, but he's just a bullshit background character. Yeah. Um. Although the Comic Conspiracy Podcast really is a lot like the Legion of Substitute Heroes at the end of the day. <laughs> um, this is from Felix. He has got a question about the Legion of Superheroes reboot. He says, uh, I just, in his email, he says, I just finished up going through the Legion of Superheroes stuff you guys recommended a while back. It just makes me even more annoyed that the New 52 run was that awful. Uh, the well, main the, run was the, bad. Lost wasn't bad. I actually thought Lost was okay yeah, for what it was. It was yeah. The main series was pretty bad. Yeah, it was. Uh, Who would you guys like to see in a reboot? The Legion for today's comic reading audience. Uh, comic reading audience. What writers and artists would be up to the task? Uh, Johns. I mean, I don't want to go to the Jeff Johns, but <laughs> the problem is the best Legion written in the last decade has been Jeff Good Johns. Job. Wade did a good job. Well, so Wade did some of the stuff in the '90s, and then when he came back, it was good. I feel like the problem with Wade's second run of the Legion was that it was um, specifically trying to do something really different. Both of his runs in the Legion were on very non-traditional Legion titles. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Wade on a traditional Legion title. That said, he'll never work for DC again. So that's out of the question. Um, God, you know, I was thinking, I was really trying to think of someone to come up for this, but Legion is tough. Uh, Charles Soule? I I don't it, I don't necessarily think you need the you know yeah, the, Abnett the, and Lanning right. or you don't need the space guys really right you just need someone that can do good chemistry between the characters and not Tomasi. Have, and not Peter yeah, Tomasi he would do a great job I could see yeah. he does a great job with the as kid long, with Damien as long as they didn't have a vote for who was leader like within the first six issues oh they always do that that's Jeez, that's, that's the Legion. Duh. I voted Monel, bitch, and he won a couple years ago. <laughs> yes, I voted. Um, yeah, Tomasi, I think, could do a pretty good job. I think he's done a good job with uh, well, he did, Damien. He did, he did a great job with the uh, Green Lantern Corps. Yeah. Yep. yep, and Damien. So you get a little bit of that there. Uh, you know, I was trying to think like a Marvel, good Marvel guy or good indie guy, someone new they could bring on the title. But Legion's tough, man. It's real tough. You can have a little bit of classic. But you got to do something new with it too because they're kids. So I mean, it, Nick Spencer might be able to pull something mm-hmm. off. He did that. He did the team stuff with Superior, and that was good. And he's done some. Didn't, wasn't Nick Spencer doing the? Um, he has. He's he did done, this. He did the a lot of Superboy. Stuff. He was doing the Superboy backup yeah, stuff, so. right? I wasn't that so. Nick Spencer? Yeah, I could see Nick Spencer doing a good job too. Uh, art wise, I have I have no clue. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, art wise, it needs to be. It 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 needs to not be cartoony. Well, what does cartoony mean? Well, it needs to be it needs to be something that's a little more serious, not so, not so like, kind of uh, like Charlie's going to agree with me here. I want fucking Mike Allred on. A, on yeah. a, you, you you looked at me, oh, and I think Jesus. we made eye contact. Yeah. We were like Mike Allred. Yeah, uh, he would kill on a Legion title. He would. He would. I don't. Yeah. I'm not maybe, a big fan, but yeah. I don't maybe necessarily want him ongoing, but a short mini or an oh, yeah. arc. I, I could see him doing a killer job on, on a legion book yeah like the the artist from prez like i love the artist on prez yep but i don't think that art would work for a legion book mm, it's not cartoony yeah it's pushing it prez have you read it yeah prez is like vertigo art 101 <laughs> like that that's that is the furthest from cart i mean there are cartoony elements to the comic but the yeah. art is not, i mean and I'm cartoony. I mean, I hate that expression. I've always hated cartoony too, art. It doesn't mean anything. Has Darwin Cook ever done Legion? Um, I want to say they were in New Frontier, weren't they? He's never done a Legion book like a traditional Legion title. I don't believe. I don't remember them in New Frontier, but it's been a while. I know. I, I know. They were. I know who I would love to see art. Nicola Scott. Yeah, yeah. She's got a good style. Mm-hmm. 
Darwin Cook, though, would do a killer, like, again, a great Legion, like, mini. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, you couldn't get him for super yeah, long yeah, real tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, question here from Cisco uh, on Twitter, also about Legion. He says, we all remember the Legion flight ring from Flash, mm-hmm. uh, that cameo. Uh, it says, will the Legion flight ring play into the Supergirl Flash episode or, only, or can the Legion access uh, CBS and CW shows? Don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I'm assuming the Flash Supergirl thing is a one-time deal and maybe more talks will happen after, but that's probably, much like Constantine, probably only going to happen once. So my expectation is the only way it's going to happen is if both networks see some sort of monetary <laughs> gain out return of it. out of yeah, it, yeah. basically. And, and I fully like, believe Legion will be a big part of Supergirl season two. I said that yeah. from the beginning. If I had that feeling. Well, heaven forbid they had Supergirl and the Legion of Superheroes comics. Well, right. That's what I mean. I, 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 I feel like that's the next progression for her well, past Who's Jimmy her love interest? In the... In the comics. In the comic? Like, who would it be? Yeah. Who's the, her love interest? I mean, Brainiac 5. It's Brainiac 5. Yeah. From the Legion of Superheroes. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. right. Um, so I, I also want to mention, it came out today, the Justice League Cosmic Clash original movie. It's one of the Lego superhero movies. Uh, uh, Lego DC movies, I should say. But specifically, this is definitely a lot Legion uh, heavy. Uh, it comes with a Cosmic Boy Lego minifigure. The Lightning Lad minifigure was part of like their, like what was it, like Target's giveaway thing for Christmas? That's what Toby was telling me. Doesn't surprise me. It was one of like the little box thing they give away. Yeah. Um, hashtag we Saturn Girl. That's all I'm saying. So let's 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 get the let's get the main three out. Come on, it will be at like Comic Con this year just to make it all the harder. <laughs> Cisco also asks, which three or four legionaries uh, legionaries would you like to see on TV? Assuming Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, and Lightning Lad are in. So assuming those three, what other Legion characters would you like to see in? What do you guys want? I should pull up a big list of Legion superhero characters. Uh, I'd like to see... Uh, I always think Bouncing Boy. I don't know why, but I always think Bouncing Boy. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see... Um, Sun, is it Sunfire? Or what's the guy in the suit? I can't remember his name. Guy in the suit? Yeah, if he has the, to stay in the suit. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. The, the problem is between Marvel and DC. Sorry, I'm pulling up my. All... I'm sorry, I'm pulling up my big list here so I can. So I can. Oh, wow, you're talking about Wildfire. Wildfire, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was like, guy in the suit. Yeah, yeah, Wildfire. Yeah. Um, Timberwolf. Timberwolf's cool. I liked him in the cartoon. Yeah. That was one of the times I really liked him. I thought yeah. they did a good job with him in the cartoon. Uh, it's tough. Besides the main three, I feel Bouncing Boy is one that always needs to be in it. Uh, Triple Cut Girl, Triple Cut Girl yeah. is yeah. another one that I always like. Um, when you start getting to the later ones, it's a little bit tough. Um, I like... Oh, Brainiac 5. Well, <laughs> I feel like Brainiac 5 is always... He's going to be there whether or not you he, want him or not. He's the number four. <laughs> I always feel like he's the number four. Um, I love mon I just don't know if they'd bring him in yeah. to a show because well, he's too it, yeah. much. Don, Don Star, right? The... The Angel Girl, Don Star, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. and they mentioned Don Star's home planet a couple episodes in Supergirl oh. uh, when they were talking about um, when they when he was talking with uh, what's her name um, uh, when he was talking when she was talking with Master Jailer the episode mm-hmm. what was that two weeks ago uh, yeah they were talking about Starhaven which is her home planet yeah. so and they that that Lobo reference too in that episode so Uh-oh. or Lobo they they never said the word Lobo but they teased around him yeah. so. Uh, I'm trying to think what else here. I got my list here. Uh, I like Karate Kid yeah. a yeah. lot. Name wise, they may not be able to get away yes. with it. But yeah, I was about to say that would be kind of weird. Name wise, uh, Star Star Starboy Starboy or, or the, Star what, Starman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the other? What's the girl in the silver? Uh, um, Dream Girl. Dream Girl. Yeah. Yeah. I love Dream Girl. I, well, it can, yeah. I, I think those two kind of have to come together. No, they're together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we named a, bit, a lot of big ones. And Block then, could be a cool. I uh, yeah. have the more recent-ish blocks a good one because um, he kind of fills that the, thing role the monster phantom role. girl that Monel, Monel's girlfriend phantom girl is it phantom <laughs> yeah okay. I, was just, I was like, I, was like phantom? I wasn't they're sure all girl. they're all boy or girls yeah, or something true. um i'm trying to think of uh more recent uh there is uh what the heck was that guy's name um well there's the teleporter alien guy 
Ah, oh, this is gonna kill me. I'm I'm drawing a blank here. I'm gonna have to go look it up later. There's invisible lad. There's a bunch. Of, there's a bunch of them. But uh, oh god. Which one? I can't remember. Can you describe the character? Oh god, it's the alien guy. It's the super alien. The really. It's the the tele. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but the you the other one yeah. guy. That's where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the ah? Oh, just tip of my tongue. What's well, his name? Yeah, it's the it's the bug looking guy. Yeah. Oh, you're killing me. Killing. Because there's him and then the the, oh, yeah, the, right. the, the telepathy one. Now I gotta find this. Now. But if this. you have the legion, you have to have Validus. Well, as a villain. As yeah, a villain, yeah, but yeah. come on. I was actually just thinking in general, I would be really excited for the villains in some ways more than the Legion. I, I'd be excited for Rebels. Yeah. Oh, Gates. Gates. That, yeah. That's the same. Um, we actually, I believe we actually are getting a Legion of Superhero character in Flash. Isn't XS supposed to be on the show? Wasn't that another one of the rumored speedsters that he's because the velocity is in mm-hmm. is that this week's yeah, episode? yeah this week. um yeah because i'm also behind on i didn't watch arrow i so i, I swear they said something about xs being on an episode and she's from the legion so we shall see god i love the legion so much see what they're going to do is they're going to have a legion on all these different shows so they can do the legion of three worlds <sighs> <laughs> oh, Charlie, I think you just like you just you just nut in your pants. This is never gonna happen, and now I want it so <laughs> bad. Yeah, but a lot of times, a lot of times, the stuff you want comes to pass because oh. apparently people like our podcast. So you have the Legion from Smallville. You can have you can have like the re like the three boot Legion on Flash, and you can have the OG Legion on Supergirl. I'll take it. I'll take it. And then Johns can get some aging makeup and become the what's the the <laughs> who's the old guy that that's, that they saved from being an assassinated? Oh, uh, yeah, Brand. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, would, yeah. that would be a good Johns. Cameo Johns could be for, Brand. For yeah, Johns. tell us a guy's name. I'm terrible. This, this, this is a part part about being a Legion superhero fan. There's so many characters I forget. Is it's it a R- Legion R- of Super RJ Brand. Yeah, yeah I just R- for, Brand. I always forget their fucking name. Jeff Johns could be RJ Brand. I can see that. Got a question here from Marco. It says, do you envision a world where Disney could eventually buy Warner Brothers? Would this be good or bad for Marvel, DC, and comics in general? This was actually a rumor like a couple years ago yeah. that yeah. Warner Brother, or that Disney was one of the short name, on the short list to buy Warner Brothers. I don't know that it would happen. I mean, it could, but... You know, Warner Brothers has way too many properties. That are- well, well, they I have mean, a lot of license. That's yeah. the thing. So Disney, I mean, if they wanted to... Grab some more stuff. I mean, they're, they're, they've been doing it, but I, I, I'm I'm going to guess Disney spent enough money at this point. Well, yeah. In the past few years, Disney spent a ton of money. Yeah, yeah but I mean, not to harp on it too much, but I kind of get the feeling they've already made most of that money back. They've already refilled oh, their coffers and then yeah. some. A, lo- a lot of it. I mean, I don't think they're profitable for Marvel and DC or Marvel and uh, Star Wars yet, but they're very close, I would think. I would I would think at least on Marvel they'd be profitable by now. Well, probably, but probably not Star Wars, not yet, but soon, yeah. but soon. Yeah, I think well, yeah, it's, they're, they're profitable but, on Marvel because of Star Wars. I think it's yes, ca- that was directed directly at you, Bryce. With um, uh, with uh, Marvel and DC being owned by the same company, that would again potential for good, potential for bad. You get the problem of uh, homogenization because they will in then theory, we would have amalgam comics everywhere well, right that's the problem disney i believe for the most part kind of lets these companies run themselves i don't i've never heard that they will use their characters but i don't think disney is getting in lucas films way or marvel comics way too much again i'm sure someone although will be like oh they've ruined everything but i don't think there's disney execs Telling them to draw, you know, mouse ears on Spider Man and nothing like that. So no, but and uh, this isn't really to say a negative. I I think it's actually more the price point than anything else. But to buy Warner Brothers. Well, no, I I meant in terms of the individual issues prices. It just we kind of talk a little bit about it every once in a while that like it, it kind of seems like the axe for the most part seems to come down pretty quickly on books nowadays like you, oh yeah you you have a few cases like omega men that managed to dodge the axe yeah really really well but i kind of feel like there, there used to be a little more of a 
We love this series so much. We're, we're trying to keep it around. Well, I mean, I don't think that would change if if, if Disney owned DC. No, I'm I'm just saying that in terms of the current comic state, that's kind of the way it is in both companies right now. Yeah, well, yeah, both Marvel and DC are at the end of the day pretty similar right now. They're yeah. going through very similar problems. Yeah, they've had similar reactions. So I don't expect the companies would change all that dramatically. No. Uh, I would kill to have a Marvel vs. DC float at Disneyland. That'd be amazing. But I don't think they need it. I mean, I think at that point, you would actually have Batman and Superman competing against Spider-Man and, and, and mm-hmm. Iron Man more so than they already are because they are by the same company. That would be kind of a weird conflict. I don't think it would happen. I I, I get a feeling they, they well, at this point they wouldn't do it. Well, at that point we would well, get the we would get the the Justice League Avengers book where they just sit there and complain about who came first. No, 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 no. They they would just start publishing Harley Deadpool books. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so we got a <laughs> got another one the, from no, no, the the one that everybody wants and it's on the tip of everyone's tongue. The Deadpool Green Lantern crossover. So uh, we got – man, Cisco sent us a ton of questions here. He says, assuming – Nothing DC for rebirth, Mitch. I think he's up here. He says, assuming Rebirth is successful enough to regain a lot of lost market share, how long until DC raises prices? All the DC comics starting in June will be two ninety nine. When will they go to three ninety nine? When they stop shipping bimonthly. That's probably a good guess for some titles. Yeah. No, I, I, think, I think DC is smart in, in the sense of keeping books two ninety nine. Double shipping on the bigger title because DC just pitched the six dollar comic. That's the thing you got to think about. DC said, "Oh, three ninety nine? You mean five ninety eight? Yeah, DC is putting out a six dollar comic now. Keep that in mind." Mm-hmm. Well, that's the double shipping, right? So it's like you know, it, it it to me, if Batman ends up going bi monthly to once a month, they'll drop it to they'll raise it to three ninety nine. But if it's coming out twice a month, but I think that my my feeling is that these books will be replaced with new titles. It's not like they're gonna well, drop not, it in not, not something like Batman. No, no, no. But I mean, they will say, okay, we have seventeen. I think it's seventeen. Seventeen books that are double shipping. Mm-hmm. We're gonna bring two of them down to single shipping because we're gonna introduce these two other titles. There these two other week, mm-hmm. these two other monthly titles. But, I, but they, but so they, but they would, positive but they would probably do that to books that they would keep at the three ninety nine price point, like. Green Lantern, you know, um, mm. you know, titles that are a little bit more mid rangey. Yeah. I think you're going to see a lot of pushing the prices on. I mean, if they ever do another Sandman, that's not going to be two ninety nine. You're not going <laughs> to no, get no, two ninety nine no. on Dark Knight four when they do it. Like, well, and 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 stuff like uh, the digital first stuff will still be three ninety nine because yeah. that yeah. is a lot lot uh, bigger sizes. Yeah. So, so I, I think. I think there could very well become a point where they're going from two ninety nine to three ninety nine, but I yeah. think that will be very depend dependent on how people react when they do this launch and say we're keeping everything at two ninety nine. If the sales reward that move, yeah. they'll keep the price at two ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, or if they decide to adopt the three ninety nine in digital code. Yeah. 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 So I'm surprised. I'm really surprised I didn't do that. Yeah, very so surprised. Well, the thing is, is I, I mean, I, I don't have the, we don't have the numbers, but I think that, I, I think that they're looking at their digital sales going. Our digital sales probably seem to do okay on their own for what share of the market it is. That they feel that there's no that that they don't need to cut into that because they always. I have, don't think the redemption's very high. No, 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 no. I'm not saying redemption. I'm saying they're looking at their digital sales going, are we make more, we would make more money just keeping the digital digital and the comics comics than combining them. Well, right, because the comics will be two ninety nine. Yeah. So there's your six dollars if you want. No, if, if they did the three ninety nine with digital code, they would make more money. You would buy more single issues. Well, it, they want to make more well, money because they, they were doing the digital code. They do they do three? More. Do they do three ninety nine? Twice a month at that point? No. They're not going to do that. I don't think they would. Marvel has, but I don't think DC would. So I don't think they would make more money. Because at that point, you're, mm. you're, you're charging a buck more. You're losing three bucks on the second copy uh, and three dollars on the and, and six dollars on the digital. Well, so I don't think they would. The, the reason why I'm curious about this, and we've sort of talked about this a little bit, is I don't think you get enough people who, like, 
you will get people like me who buy the print and get the digital and cash in the digital, but I'm not buying the digital if I'm not buying the print kind of thing. It's it's not like it's a, oh, well, I phased out my print comics and I'm just buying digital. No, it it was sort of more systematic that I like buying in print and I like having the digital code to sort of hold me over till they do a nice hardcover or whatnot. But, but like I said, I, I, I believe the majority of people either don't redeem the code or it's completely secondary yeah. and it's not a case of well but I'm just I'm just wondering in terms of the sales at 299 versus 399 I don't know how big the difference it would be I don't know yeah. I don't know Let's move on to one more um well actually a couple more well, one more here from Cisco It's actually a good question it ties in earlier with our Batman v Superman talk He says using only info from trailers Mhm no behind the scene reports or scuttlebutt. What are your predictions for Batman v Superman? Uh, mine are Clark gives Bruce a kryptonite ring by the movie's end, and Clark melts down his statue around Doomsday to imprison him. That's a good one. I like that. I like that one. I I don't know. That's a good question. Using just the stuff we've seen from the trailer, do we get a Joker flashback? Um, they have the. They have, they, have, the, they have the suit. Do we get the? Do we actually get a Joker flashback? It's possible. I think. I think this harkens back to what you were talking about. In that, or do we see the the Jason Todd? Well, and that's the thing is, 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 but I think that's what harkens back to what you were saying. Is that is that Star Wars was playing it so close to the cuff that they really only showed us a little bit. Batman v Superman has only really showed us a little bit, and it's already been. Con- well, I, I'm guessing breaking the rule, but it's already been confirmed that that scene with him. Landing and taking off the mask is a is the dream sequence. Right, right, right. Um, I think we're going to get from just what we've seen. We're going to have Lex plotting something sinister. Oh, of course. <laughs> we're going to have the superheroes fighting, right? Do you? <laughs> and then and then there's going to be. Do you hear the question gonna, when I? Yeah, I heard the question. I'm actually giving the answer. <laughs> Then you're going to have the woman that comes in and kind of messes up everything because you have to have a love triangle. And there's some big bad, but there's another bad Did that I have we haven't a seen. Stroke? <laughs> what are you saying? What, it, didn't he ask what we think? He didn't say vaguely retell us what you saw in the trailer. He said using what you've seen in the trailer. Yeah. Make what, a prediction. Make, make predictions of other events that will happen in the film. Like his idea of okay, they show the statue, they focus on that statue yeah. a lot, melting that statue to capture Doomsday. That's a good guess. What the hell is that made out of? It's just metal. I don't know. He, he seals it in, around in him. Metal. Yeah, sure. He seals it around him. Like I think that's a good guess. I think that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, from what we've seen from the trailer, I, I can't tell you anything except there. There's the classic conflict at a, in a dance scene. Moving on, Charlie. Do you have any? Do you have any? Do you have any things you think might happen? I, mean, I don't even know where to go with other it. Other than like the the prediction he said about the kryptonite ring, I kind of assume kryptonite will come into it in some form. Yeah, yeah. Um, but part of that just has to do with the fact that it's so Dark Knight influenced. I just I can't see them not having some sort of kryptonite glove or something <laughs> like that. Um, well, do you think that's what's stopping him when he blocks his, blocks him? He's got kryptonite yeah. in the glove. Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna get a Joker scene. I really, th- I really do. I kind of was thinking about it, but now that I more that I think about it, I think we're gonna get the actual flashback. I, I think that's really, really likely, especially being able to use that to spin off towards the Suicide Squad. So, well, I mean, it would be this. It would be the smart thing to do. Yeah, for DC, yeah. have Jared Leto in a flashback scene in this movie. And because of Ben Affleck's in a scene in Suicide Squad. Yeah. So I think that that we would be... We still don't... Or do we know... Like, is Suicide Squad supposed to be the same timeline? Is it supposed to be earlier? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's... Uh, we got one... I well, don't care. That was my answer. Screw you we, we got one here from Mitchell. Hey, Mitch! And I actually don't know the answer to this, because I haven't read it. Um, did any of you read Fight Club 2? And if so, was it any good? Have you been reading that, Charlie? I read the first three or four, and I mean, it's okay. Yeah. It, 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 it's all over the place at some point. The the, the 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 joy of Fight Club was... That you don't talk about Fight Club? Well, was the fact that you didn't really 
get a sense of everything that was going on until you get farther into the movie and everything kind of gets revealed and plays out. Well, with this, you kind of already know a lot of that, so right, it, it's right. it does not I, it play it, as well. The I was reading it and I was interested. Like the first issue, I think caught me a little bit, mm-hmm. um, but about two two to four five issues in, I was just I couldn't. <laughs> I, I couldn't handle kind of just how out of the, like all over the top it was, and then the art and the it just text doesn't kind have of the hook. yeah, it doesn't have the hook. It's like yeah. it's like hey, guess what? He's coming back, and yeah. you're kind of like okay, but you're not. It's not like it's it, it's not like the build up that no, we got no, no. in the Fight Club. He's coming back, but he was actually already here, here yeah. in but- pod form. <laughs> Cocoon yeah. from problematic cartoon. That is problematic. He asks. What dark side slash new god story should I read? I found Final Crisis unintelligible. Well, <laughs> sir, <laughs> you just started a war. You should learn how to read because Final Crisis is incredible. <laughs> Christ. That said, I will admit, I will fully admit, I'm not a big new gods fan. I'm ne- I've never ne- never been. I love dark side. I love the elements around the new gods. Yeah. But the classic stuff, the Kirby stuff, never clicked. I really should go back and really give them a shot in order. But the classic stuff never took with me the wall simons and stuff in the 90s never worked for me i just like them when they're in like justice league Justice League unlimited and dark sides around a justice league like that's how i like my new gods the god the godhead stuff from Green yeah Lander the was, godhead was bad. good um i guess for me yes going back to the kirby stuff is very good but it it also takes a long time to like fully unfold that that's why it's kind of amazing when you look at the time frame of when that stuff was done and the fact that it had to be collected in four hardcovers. Mm-hmm. Um, that stuff was good. The the Legion Dark Side story was good. Oh yeah, yeah. That's less um, New Gods though. I mean, that's just kind yeah. of Dark Side and Legion. Yeah, I know. Great um, dark, Great Darkness Saga is fantastic. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Like I, I would. I kind of really wish I had access to my bookshelf right now. So. Well, they had like that New God series and the Orion series of stuff. I think with Walt Simonson yeah. worked on a lot of that well, in the nineties. Yeah. Those they had didn't that click. Death, Death well, of New Gods story. Oh, that was awful. That was awful. That was terrible. Um, the the New Gods from uh, oh, what was it? Uh, they were in um, shit. I can't remember what they were in. It was, it, was, it was like a Justice League thing or something. Well, Dark Side was yeah. in. Um, Dark Side was in. Oh no, uh, Earth Two. It's the when they do some of the New God stuff in Earth Two. Yeah. In the Morrison Justice League run, Dark Side played a, a role in that in the, one of the early yeah. arcs. So that's good stuff. No, there's there's been a lot of times where they have used Dark Side as a very good antagonist. Yeah, I'm failing to remember particular story arcs, which is why I'm wishing I had my bookshelf right now. <sighs> no, I was. <laughs> I think the nudes God stuff, if you get to know the general history of it and the sort of history of the characters, yeah. is just fine. I think they've had a hard time utilizing those characters after that in right, an right, effective right, 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 right. way. Now, I think that the New Gods would have been a, a great um, like franchise for them to New 52 would given them a little bit more of a different take. Because, I mean, it, they still kind of had the similar feel in the Green Lantern stuff. Well... <laughs> So one of the things I really like about some of the stuff they've done over the past couple of years, okay, now it's not even the past couple of years, in the past really long fucking time, <laughs> um, was they played around with the whole idea of like there were gods before the new gods and like all that kind of stuff, which I always like when they delve into. Like I really like a lot of the mythology and stuff. Whoa. Turn your phone off, Charlie. Yes, apparently. Nice one, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had to happen on well, you, episode 250. You could have waited a couple minutes. Well, let's, let, let's ask one last question that we're not going to answer, but it's a good question for why us. Are we, why are we Because it will make asking? us remind us for next week. You, it's something, you realize how bad we are doing that? Oh, yeah. We're totally not going to answer it next week but because the next couple episodes are going to be weird. So our good friend, Scott. Cross X Hunter, as you know him, okay. asks, So what number of books? Well, he actually says what books, but then he gives a list of numbers. So I'm assuming he means what number. What number of books is everyone actually actively reading? I did a count for myself, and it's 14 DC, 4 Image, 1 Marvel, and 1 Action Lab. 
that would take a while to count the number of books yeah. that I'm actively reading from yeah. each company. So why don't we table that? We'll actually get a list together, not a full list of like here's every title, but I'll, I'll, let's run some numbers. A couple of weeks, we'll go back to you, and we'll. I'm wondering does, okay, when does, you say actively reading, does that count the stuff you wait for trades? Trade, does yeah, that like, count like whatever? Act current books that you are actively reading. If you're actively waiting for a trade. And okay. you're in a, in a part of a series, sure. If you're like, maybe I'll buy the next one. No, I don't well, no. I just there's obviously certain books that but as soon as the to, next trade comes out, I buy it. it. Doesn't have to be stuff you take home though, because yeah. the great thing about the three of us here at the store is we get to actively re- read a lot of comics we don't necessarily so, yeah, purchase yeah. because of the store. So, well, but yeah. Technically, I'm trade waiting for the Star Wars hardcovers. So does, <laughs> does that count? Well, that's why I was asking, like. Okay, we'll get you a big, massive list. Yeah. My answer would be, like, Marvel and DC, most. <laughs> Independent, some. I mean, that's my... Well, I mean, I go, yeah. for me, it, it's a, kind of the similar. It's about a medium amount for each one. How this, about we do this? How about we do this? Why don't we go through the March previews, the previews that just came out, and actively count the number of books that we are reading in in single-issue form? It doesn't matter what form we're reading them, but current books that are currently in previews that we are or will read single issue okay how about that we'll do that so give us a couple just, weeks we'll get a list. single issue right yeah 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 so Cause, but because we could I, I think trades would be a better as a separate list no 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 like right the trade the trade waiting list. I, I yeah, yeah i don't i don't wait for anything in the trade so Which don't you probably should because well you RBI. by the time i read them it might as well be yeah yeah, yeah. all right that's it thank you guys um wow episode 250 250 yeah, yeah. that was 250 yep and 251 yeah, like I said, we're gonna have a guest on next week. Uh, we're gonna do some, we got some Disney wait, stuff to talk about next wait, week. A guest? We are like a, a guest. live, actual person that wants to be on this. That's that's like we've had many guests on this podcast. No, I'm saying, but this is a this is a uh, we've had an indus- industry guest. Good, a little bit. Uh, we have a number of guests that will be joining us for the next couple episodes. So um, again, our next few will be a little different than normal. But uh, so make sure you check those guys out, and then we'll come back probably with the Batman v Superman episode. So it's going to be a weird month. Uh, stick with us, though. Um, yeah, it's good to mix it up from time to time. I'm sure there's going to be some hot uh, convert uh, convergence, some hot rebirth news coming out end of the month. They said at WonderCon everything gets announced, so that episode will also be big. Maybe we'll do a Special. Well, we're gonna have probably a couple specials or something this month. I don't know what's going on, and I can't believe I forgot. Brock, we hit a Patreon milestone. Oh, we did hit a Patreon milestone, Charlie? Did Shit. you know this? Thanks to all our backers on Patreon, Shit. we hit a milestone. We must fulfill that milestone. Do you know what this milestone is? What's the milestone? We're bringing back for this month random picks of the week. Awesome! Every episode. Every episode. Whew. Shh. No pressure, Brock. No what's your pressure. Ra- what's your random Jesus. pick of the week? That's Rand- that's why it's random. What's your random week? pick of the week? What's your random pick of the week? For this week? Yep, right now. Well, we didn't do even it. get new books. Doesn't matter. No, it's not this week. Uh, it's okay. random. That's why it's a random right. pick. What well, book? Any book? New, old, old, whatever. Current. What are you reading right I, now? Or what have you read? Or what have you read in the past? I think everyone should pick up Prez one through six. That's my random pick. It is hilarious. It's funny. Uh, with all T- the st- timely, with, timely. Yeah. It's all the with all the stuff that's going on in politics. Uh, Right now, it's it's just an awesome, awesome read because of the ridiculousness and truth of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, really great title. I'm looking forward to uh, Volume 2, the next uh, mini that's coming out. But Prez 1 through 6. Has the trade come out yet? Or is that... No, not yet. I don't believe. Okay. But it, 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 it issues 1 through 6. Good, good stuff. Sorry. Yeah, take that, Higgins. Oh, I got, I got, I got something. You were prepared. No, I seriously forgot about it, but there was something I read real recently that I wanted to talk about. So, I recently read Art Ops. I'm enjoying that after Ryan recommended it a, good few, ass book. a few podcasts ago. Yep. So, I finally went, yeah, I do need to read that. What's the writer on that? Um, Isn't it Milligan? No, no, no. No, I'm totally blanking, but um, uh, no. Mike Oliver does the art. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck is not the name of the artist or the writer. You can keep talking, Charlie. I just want to pick yeah. up the book. Um, I just started Clean Room. I've only read the first issue. Clean and Room didn't click with me. Gail Simone. Yeah. Clean Room didn't click with it's me. It's Gail Simone. Uh, not Art Ops. Cle- clean Room is Gail Simone. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. what is this one? It's the same last name, then. No. No. That, there's no E there. 
And apparently there's no um apparently in this comic there's no uh there's no credits either. What's going on? Uh Art Ops. Charlie, you gotta pitch everyone on Art Ops because I really, really like this seriously no credits in this book. What the hell's going so, on? So Art Ops is the idea of pretty much all art is alive and just like anything else you have art that must be protected at all costs and you have art that could end up being the villain so there's this organization called oh, yeah, here we Ops go yeah sean simon that's, oh, that's simon. Sean. i was thinking paul job simon. basically paul is simon. to sort of maintain that balance between the real world and the art world and protect works of art like the mona lisa but of course like any of these kind of stories in some ways it really does play like the idea of a movie plot because most of the art ops is wiped out. Um, the head of art ops son basically gets pulled into this world when his arm gets decapitated and replaced with an art arm. All right. You mean and, not decapitated. That's well, when the I know. head comes off. I know, but <laughs> Am- amputated, uh, amp- whatever removed. <laughs> it, it gets removed, Correct. but that's R- okay. Ryan is starting to, hey, guess what? This, this the new stuff. arm has a mind of its own. Yeah, I know. So I, there you I, go. I read it. I, I read like the first issue. I wasn't. It wasn't for me. No, it's neat. I, I, I like. I, I love. I, I'm like two I, issues back still, but I, I read the first really three or four. like or two the three. all red art on it just because it can go so crazy. And the he's the perfect artist for that. book. He's the perfect artist for that book. It can go crazy, and yet he still captures stuff like the Mona Lisa face perfectly mm-hmm. on it, even as they sort of like have her go into hiding, so it's not quite her but it is her and yeah i like it it's it's nifty so random picks of the week generally are not supposed to be things that are extremely mass popular super awesome books that everyone else has read but it came out a little while ago being ryan higgins and being a year behind on, on half my reading uh i actually just finally got around to reading a very big massive major story that I was actually really blown away that I liked it as much as I did. And uh, that's Batman Endgame by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Now, I've liked their run. Uh, I thought Death of the Family was really good. I, like a lot of people, I thought um, the the, years, the zero, zero year, year stuff dragged. was a little bleh. Um, and that, I, I, I fell way back on Batman, I think because of zero year, along with a lot of other people. Now, clearly... When this book came out, we were talking about it. I was like, it felt like it was like eight months ago or nine months ago or something. It came out, or no, maybe even more than that, like a year ago when it came out. Um, I've been putting off big chunks of my kind of take home reading and be catching up in, in again big big chunks. So much like reading in the trade, I, that's what I've been doing with a lot of titles coming up. And I was very excited to get to Endgame and finally get a chance to actually sit down and read because I flip through every issue. I do with everything, but I boom, sit down, private my own home, read it straight through. Man. What a good, what a great Joker story. If you fell off of Batman and you didn't keep going, really go back and read it. It's it's weird. All this stuff that people were saying about, oh, they changed Joker's origin. They, It's the same story as everything with the Joker. They give this sort of question and then they completely erase it by the end. And it's mm-hmm. like you, don't, you know nothing more about the Joker than at the end than you do at the beginning. Yep. It's a complete... Like every Joker thing, a complete fabrication. You have no idea what's real or not. Um, real, real good. Uh, one of the creepiest Jokers ever. Just so well done. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you like again, if you like the Joker and you didn't stick with it, read it. He does such a good job of making the Joker just just creepy. Just you feel like the Joker's in the room when you're reading these books. In the bright of day, I'm like, man, I'm I'm legitimately getting a little creeped out reading this because. Between uh-huh. Capullo's art, yeah, and his writing. They, they do a very good job in that story of making the Joker seem like he could be supernatural for yeah. a while in it. And there was a part of me that was very much like, but, but Joker shouldn't be supernatural. But by the end of it, I agree. They kind of put the genie back in the bottle yep. to a degree, and yep. Yep. it worked really, really well. Yep, they give, an, they give a reasoning why... He survived the more recent encounter, you know, yeah. why he's able to take this beating. But it's it's over by the end of the story. Yeah. So it's not like this has always been the way it is. The scenes where he's going through, like, old photographs and the Joker, like, is yeah. in them. That was a really, really good scene. So, yeah, yeah man, I 
I I really surprised because I was expecting I was expecting it to be good. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. So I have another random pick. Save it for next what? week. But I want to pick it now. Pick it now. The Poison Ivy miniseries. I've really been liking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really good. I gotta, yeah. I got to catch up. The first two issues. Whew, yeah, that's the, it, it. Surprisingly enough, I was like. Poison Ivy, decent art. I'll pick it up. Read the first issue. I was like, that was good. Read the second issue. I was like, that was good. So, yeah. I, I, the, I'll, I'll, I'll second that, that extra yeah. random pick for this week. Yeah. it's uh, So, there's four people. Selling out, and, and, and people, are, people are definitely clamoring for that one. So, All right. So, we're going to wrap up. Before we do, though, we have our big, long list of people here from Patreon. we got a few new people here, so let's hit this list real quick. Thank you, everyone, that donated to us. And um, these guys are some of our, our backers. They get their names read. The first of uh, first podcast of every month. So here we go, along with all the great backers that we read uh, earlier. We also have to thank our good friends, Mark Long, Edgar Moreno, Kevin Nguyen, Blake uh, Blake Ether, uh, Blake Etheridge, sorry, Christopher Stone, Wesley Thawne, Mike Campbell, David Sfar, Christopher Noyes, Eric Kovacs, Alex McHale, Sam Shea, Joel Jimenez, Armando Tastani, Ivan Leskanik, Leskanik, yes, I'm trying to pronounce some of these names better. If I'm wrong, <laughs> tell me, Chris uh, Palaki, as you corrected me, I believe that's correct, uh, hopefully, Aaron Wright, Jason Thomas, Ocularis, Mark Schnapp, Santiago Mendez, Sloan, our good friend Peter Parker. Don't forget him. Father Dante, Don Kilson, John G, and Dennis Jansen. Thank all of you for your wonderful, wonderful donations to this podcast and everyone else we mentioned earlier. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to go to geekbox.net. You can hear this episode and all our previous episodes, as well as on iTunes. Rate and review us on iTunes, please. Thank you. That's how people find this podcast a lot of times. Can I interrupt real quick? You sure can. Uh, Charlie? Hmm? Did you see Deadpool? Yes. We haven't heard your talk on Deadpool. Oh, Charlie, tell us what you thought of yeah. Deadpool in like three weeks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw Deadpool before the rest of you. Yeah, you even. probably did. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh. Yeah. That's what happens when I miss a couple podcasts. Yeah. Hmm. No, I really like Deadpool. And don't it, don't it worry, Charlie can keep it short. laugh a lot more than 90 nine percent of the movies i see did so no i i have a lot of respect for deadpool and the fact that they kind of decided this is a movie we're gonna make and they just didn't hold anything back and yeah i liked it a lot and credit scene thoughts i'm waiting for the casting and all <laughs> that with the rest <laughs> of you everybody and yeah you and everyone sorry i, I sorry i didn't no even... no i we should have talked about it earlier yeah i completely forgot yeah. Well, we can, when Bryce is back on, maybe you two can go off with of Deadpool for a bit. Yeah. The Comic Conspiracy at Geekbox.net. That's our email address. Send us an email if you want on the podcast. Or use that contact form at Geekbox.net. Patreon.com slash Comic Conspiracy. You can also use that email address to send Ryan a audio file of how you pronounce your name. You can do that if you want. Patreon.com slash Comic Conspiracy. That's where you can go donate us some money. Digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. That's where you can go buy all your digital comics. We get a nice little cut every time what we get What was the sale they had this weekend? It was some. Was it a sub? sub. Doesn't matter sub. now. Yeah, the gym's sub. Up, sub. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they've been having some decent sales. I'll, I'll always check out their sale pages. Brock's got his uh, video blog and pull list, conspiratorbrock.com. which will be delayed this week. Well, yeah, we're still waiting for our book. <laughs> Charlie's got the Infinite Long Box podcast and Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension, his comic book, and then Doctor Who podcast. Make sure you check those guys out. Um, my wife, Leanne, she's got her shop, etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. She just finished up. Brock. Keep going. She just finished up a nice Kylo Ren piece that mm-hmm. you can purchase here at the store and on our Etsy store. So make now, sure you check that out. Now, I want our listeners to uh, petition her to do a Radar Tech mat. Ah. Uh, piece so get on that guys because her kylo ren is awesome but it's pretty good i, I yeah. think she it's, it's, would do a good. bomb ass radar technician map. yes 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 i get the joke ryan higgins ryan that's me on twitter brock is brock sager bryce who i believe is going to be on next week is larson bryce toby is toby xi still recovering hopefully we get him back in a couple weeks charlie's insanity and chaos and our wonderful store account um we've been trying to promote uh, the store and things we have for sale and all that social media jazz over yeah, let, at 
let you know about things that are coming out. Yeah, keep you yeah. updated, especially for- at, that we have twenty five dollar mystery comic book boxes. Of course, subscribe here at the store or online mail order. All that can be found in more at Comics Con Store. That's on Twitter. Make sure you follow that Comics Con Store. We actually got some exclusive, apparently exclusive pages, which I hope more people uh, see this. For uh, the Alien Defiance, which is Brian Wood's uh, new Alien series that he's doing for Dark Horse. Really good. I got a chance to read the first issue, and they let us post a few pages on, on our Facebook. Oh, nice. Uh, really good. And uh, we also do have a, a weekly mailing list that we're now sending out from the store, so you can find out things like solicitation, mm-hmm. upcoming events at the store and in comics. So that's all available if you go to Comics Sign Con up, Store. Subscribe. On Twitter, you can find links to all that as well. Uh, newsletter.comicsconspiracy.biz. That's where you want to go if you just want to sign up for the newsletter. Geekbox Comedy Bit and Good Job Brain. I'll talk podcasts and manga machinations. Those are our other podcasts on our little network. You make sure to listen to those guys as well. And um, they've all got Patreons or donations or iTunes. You can rate and review them on and all that stuff. So, All right, guys. We'll be back next week. Thank you and see you soon.